one of my missions is to turn on its head the idea that carbon dioxide is a pollutant and somehow dangerous, when in fact it is the most important nutrient for all life on Earth, and without it this would be a dead planet. So I say not only is carbon dioxide good, it is essential, and it's a good thing that we are putting some more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because it was running low before. In five years, scientists predict we will have the first ice-free Arctic summer. That exposes more ocean to sunlight. Ocean is dark. It consumes more of the heat from the sunlight, which then accelerates the rate of, of, the, of the melting and warming rather than the ice sheet and the snow that used to reflect it back up into the atmosphere. Before we came along. CO2, we know its benefits for plants, but it is a, a known greenhouse gas, and we're pumping too much of it in, leading to global warming. Well, actually, it may be a known greenhouse gas, but it's not known how strong it is in terms of changing the Earth's temperature. And so far in this century, there has been zero warming from a statistically significant basis, and the UK Met Office says so, yet one-third of all human CO2 emissions have been put into the atmosphere in the last 18 years. So it doesn't look like a lockstep causal relationship between increasing CO2 and warming of the Earth. Are you seriously suggesting we should be pumping more stuff in, polluting the Earth more, building more coal-fired power stations just so we can make sure that the CO2 levels are good? No, I'm not, because we're putting plenty of CO2 into the atmosphere. We don't need to do it this quickly, but if we bring it up to a higher level than it is today, we will get immediately an increase in the growth of crops and trees, which is not a bad thing. In the long run, though, it doesn't matter if we bring it down quite a bit. And so that's why I'm supportive of nuclear energy and of natural gas. This tendency to go in the rich countries to wind and solar is a giant waste of money. Those wind farms will rust in place and there is no fun to decommission them when they either wear out or we decide how ridiculous it is to spend so much money for so little electricity that isn't even reliable. What are you saying about energy policy now to the ideas of decarbonisation to cut? Is everyone wrong? Yes, they're wrong if they are actually basing their energy policy on decarbonization. They're not wrong to base their energy policy on cost effectiveness, on pollution control, which is why moving from coal to gas makes sense if you have it. But India has coal, and India has 300 million people with no electricity. What do we expect them to do? Of course they're going to build coal plants, but India is also building a lot more nuclear plants than the UK is right now, and it doesn't have the emissions of a coal plant. And China is building huge hydroelectric dams which don't have the emissions of coal plants. So many of these countries are doing their bit without wasting all this money on wind and solar energy, which is unreliable and prohibitively expensive in the long run. Then why is this consensus out there? Look, if, they, if we had definitive proof that CO2 was causing serious problems and we could prove it, don't you think they would write that down on a piece of paper somewhere so people could read it? They don't have definitive proof, period, in science. I'm a, I'm, I'm a student of the philosophy and history of science, and I know that the scientific method has not been applied in such a way as to prove that carbon dioxide is causing the Earth to warm. Do you think in a few years, say 50 years from now, people go, that was a really stupid period in our history when we tried to change all our energy policies to cut this gas? I am firmly of the belief that the future will show that this whole hysteria over climate change was a complete fabrication. Just looking at the so-called pandemic, um, in the beginning it was like, okay, we don't know what's coming, you know, mm, it was kind of like that. But uh, to me, Easter 2020, I completely left that narrative because the things they were doing did not add up. So there, there would have been, you know, steps they could have taken but didn't because they feared to be called uh, racists, and that would have actually been uh, to cut down on travel, uh, uh, travelers coming from China, right? That would have been a smart thing to do, but they didn't do that. So, um, and then the other thing was, uh, okay, there is now this pandemic going, you know, raging its way over uh, throughout the world, but um, the refugees still poured in, you know, they didn't have to provide anything. So we were the absurd situation that anyone could have stepped foot on into to my country.